Do you want to know more than you ever wanted to know about snake eggs? Well then, today's video is for you. I am going to be sharing with you some cool facts about snake eggs, as well as some tips and tricks on how to incubate them that I've never shared on this channel before. And finally, we're going to be dissecting a rotten, infertile egg, just to see what it looks like. For science! <laughs> First, look, Mr. Wilson has a name tag. I really like it. A fan sent these to us. Brad has a name tag. She's uh, angry because I don't have food for her. And then Peanut also has a name tag. Thank you again. Okay. Of course, like always, I'll have some random snake out uh, throughout the video. This is Mr. Wilson, our hybino or hypo albino bull snake that's het white side. He's the dad of most of our clutches this year. Anyway, let's start with what snake eggs are made of. Reptile bird and monotreme eggs are pretty unique in that they are just self-containing little capsules of nutrients that grow a new organism on the inside. Not only is there an embryo inside of the egg, but there are multiple membranes surrounding that embryo. The membrane that immediately surrounds the embryo is called the amnion. The amnion is full of amniotic fluid, which helps cushion and protect the embryo from vibrations, and it helps maintain a more steady temperature around that embryo. Next, you have the yolk sac, which is full of all of the nutrients needed to help that embryo grow until the day it hatches. Next, you have the allantois, which helps handle liquid waste products from the embryo, and it helps provide oxygen by facilitating gas exchange. Surrounding the embryo, the amnion, the yolk sac, and the allantois is the chorion. The chorion is another membrane that facilitates nutrient exchange and gas exchange. Basically, it allows the admission of nutrients and oxygen into the egg, and it allows the exiting of waste products and carbon dioxide. Surrounding the chorion is albumin, which is a liquid that provides the embryo with water and protein. There's also an air sac, of course, and all of this is surrounded by the shell. In as quick as just a few hours, after an egg is laid, the embryo will attach to the inner membrane of the eggshell. A recent study has shown that the majority, 59% of embryos, will attach themselves to the uppermost part of the eggshell, where that airspace is, and 28% of embryos will rest to the bottom of the egg, and that leaves us with about 13% that will actually attach themselves to the side of the egg. Interestingly enough, where the embryo attaches itself will often affect affect its incubation length of time and the size of the baby upon hatching. Embryos that attach themselves to the top of the egg typically have faster metabolisms, so they grow at a quicker rate and they hatch sooner, so they have a shorter incubation time. However, they are usually a little bit smaller than the embryos that attach themselves to the bottom of the egg, which have a slower metabolic rate, therefore it takes them a bit longer to develop, and they are bigger babies overall. Now, there hasn't been a ton of research done on the embryos that stick themselves to the side of the eggshell, but I would have to imagine that it'd be somewhere in between. Now, some reptile breeders will state that where the embryo is attached will determine if it's going to develop and survive or not, but a recent study in 2015 proved that otherwise. They were able to discover that it doesn't really matter where the embryo attaches itself, whether it's on the top, on the bottom, or on the side, the chance of that baby hatching is virtually the same. However, after the embryo has attached itself to the side of the egg, it should remain in that same orientation throughout the entire duration of incubation. That's a lot of Asians. Anyway, this study showed that if you take an egg and you slightly rotate it after it has already settled and attached, then you have a much higher mortality rate. So the lesson is, once you have eggs, the best thing to do is just to keep them at the same orientation and incubate them as is, regardless of where the embryo has attached itself. I'll put a link to this study and the resulting paper from it in the description below in case anyone's interested in reading it. I found it really interesting and maybe you will too. Now, when a female lays her clutch of eggs, she will lay them in one of two ways. She'll either scatter the eggs and kind of bury them in a pile afterwards, which is what results in a lot of embryos being like mismatched. Some attached to the top, some attached to the bottom, some around the side. That's because they were rolled a little bit by mom after they were laid. 
or the female may lay them in a big cluster, just one big pile of eggs that were stuck together right away. In those types of instances, most of the embryos will attach themselves to the top of the egg just because they haven't really been messed with at all after they were laid. And a lot of times these eggs are stuck together with a natural adhesive that is created by the mother. And the advantage of being stuck together is that if like part of the clutch of eggs is warmer in temperature than the other, that warmth will actually train transfer to the other side of the clutch and kind of balance things out. It's also thought that this adhesive that sticks the eggs together keeps them in the same position throughout the entire incubation process, which gives them a better chance at surviving and hatching. Now in captivity, we don't necessarily have to keep these eggs stuck together because we can ensure that they will not be disturbed during incubation so they won't roll around. Uh, but if you decide to split them up, then you of course want to take a sharpie or a pencil and draw a little mark on the topmost part of the egg so that if they were to get bumped, and I've heard stories of people accidentally kicking their incubators and all of the eggs falling out, then those marks will tell you which side is up because you don't want to rotate that after incubation has started. And yes, for those stories I've heard of an incubator being kicked, the eggs are like surprisingly resilient and as long as they're set back in their normal position, there's still a good chance that they can hatch. But if a breeder decides to separate those eggs for incubation and mark them, of course, they need to separate the eggs in that cluster right away. After the first 12 hours or so, that adhesive becomes practically concrete and they're nearly impossible to split up after that. So if you're breeding snakes and you have a clutch of eggs and they're clustered together, stuck together, and you don't see them right away, and by the time you see them, there's, there's no chance of you separating them, just incubate the entire thing together and they'll probably be okay. Okay. A reason why a lot of breeders decide to separate their clutches of eggs individually is because if one egg goes bad and it's attached to eight other eggs, it may, through contact, cause the rest of those eggs to go bad too. Next, I'd like to show you how to tell if an egg is fertile or not. Immediately after snake eggs are laid, it's pretty obvious which ones are fertile versus which ones are infertile. The infertile eggs we call slugs. I don't know exactly where the origin of that term came from. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments below. But we call them slugs. And slugs are yellow in color, they're typically smaller, they feel different, they don't really have a calcified shell, and they often have pointed ends to their shell-ish body. Healthy fertile eggs, on the other hand, are round, they're plump, they have a nice calcified shell, and they, they just look like eggs. Now there are some eggs that are kind of in between and you're not sure if it's a slug, like it looks a little bit sluggy but it might be fertile. You can always use the incubate until there's no debate method and you can incubate it anyway. Just keep it separated from the others in case it goes bad, it doesn't cause your healthy eggs to go bad as well. And if you want, you could even candle the egg. Candling is a technique in which you look inside of the egg by shining a light behind it, and then if you see veins inside, it's a fertile egg. Some snake eggs, you can see red fertile veins immediately after they are laid, whereas some may take upwards of a week to start developing those veins. So when in doubt, just incubate it for a little bit separately, and uh, you can candle it at a later date. Give it a full week in incubation before you finally pitch it and figure that it's infertile. But I'm going to show you how to candle an egg so you know what to look for. And afterwards, we're going to check out what the inside of an infertile slug looks like. Okay, so here we have part of Brad's clutch of eggs. They're looking great. They're still nice and white. I don't see any like windows at all in them. And we're going to candle one of these, but in order to do that, I need to shut off the lights. Okay, so I have my camera, my phone, and we're simply going to take an egg, put it on top. Whoa, see how red that is, guys? That is definitely a fertile egg. Infertile eggs will appear yellow or almost clear, but red here means it is developing, it's doing well. I wonder if we can find where the embryo is. I, of course, don't want to turn it. Cool, it almost looks like the moon. You know, like a red moon? Yeah, I can't exactly tell. I'm kind of new to figuring out where the embryo is. If I were to guess, I'd imagine it's where this really dark area is. On some eggs, you just see what looks like a Cheerio on the side, top, or bottom of the egg, and that's called, oh, what's that called? An embryonic disc, I believe. But I'm gonna test something out. I'm gonna put that one back. Now, another technique you can use is you can just take a piece of paper, like this uh, realtor ad, and you punch a hole in it and you use this to kind of help uh, channel the light through just a specified area. We're going to test this out. 
Wow, oh, that does actually cover it up quite well. I've never tried this before, so we're gonna try, let's do this egg. Gonna set it on top. Ooh. Okay, so, you know, I think I see about the same amount of egg there. I don't think I see through it necessarily better than I did without this card. Wow, look at all those veins. Oh, this one looks amazing. So, I mean, maybe, maybe with certain eggs the card trick works, but at least for bull snake eggs, I don't know, I'm just gonna use the uh, camera light on my phone. Actually, I think I see maybe right there. It looks like there's quite a bit of action going on. I wonder if that could be where the embryo attached. The veins should theoretically spread out from the embryonic disc, so that could be it. I know it's not the best candling job because my phone's camera is kind of recessed, and you know, I could take it out of the case, but we're too far now. We're gonna just set that back there. Okay, and we're good. Let's go check out a dud egg. Now I want to see what that looks like. Okay, so this is a pretty nasty egg that I literally just pulled out of the trash because now I want to see what's inside. Um, but this was an egg that was laid along with this one. We have two of them here. Uh, they were laid, they looked iffy, so I was going to incubate them for a week just to see uh, if I could candle them and see veins after a week, but they turned blue. Uh, they're not showing it anymore, unfortunately, so I can't really show you, but for me, when I have slugs that I incubate, they turn blue. It's so weird. So, I mean, even if you don't candle them after that week, the color and the obvious um, distortion of the shell here will, it'll make it pretty clear that it's not a fertile or good egg. It's also like really tough. Like there's, uh, what's this feel? It feels like rubber almost. It's so strange. So I know this is not a good egg. So we're going to cut it open and see what's inside. Before I cut this open, if you are squeamish at all, you probably don't want to watch this. Just go to this time. Just skip forward to this time and then you don't have to deal with the grossness that probably lies within. This is gonna be so gross. <laughs> Ready? Oh, it's like gelatinous. Oh, gross, it's so fuzzy. Oh man, it smells horrible. I wonder if I can push it out of the shell. Let's see. Oh, it's coming. It's co oh, 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 gross, look at that. Ew. Okay, now I have to see what's in the other. Okay, second egg. Let's see. Is it the same? Oh, <gasps> it is! Look at that. So this is what the inside of a slug egg looks like. It's squishy. It just looks like fat, but there's definitely nothing living in there. The more you know. Ew, that one smells bad too. Ugh. Oh man! <laughs> Oh, gross, that just popped on the counter. Ew. How about this one? Ready? Oh, that one didn't do it. That one just crushed in my fingers. That was kind of gross. For science! Oh, it's on my finger. So if you end up with slugs, what do you do with them? Well, honestly, you can just throw them away. They're not gonna hatch. They're kind of pointless to hang on to. They're just gonna smell after a while. Or if you want, you can refrigerate them and when you get a chance, give them to a friend who has a tegu or a monitor or like in my case, an alligator who can eat them because any free meal is great. Plus it's a good way to kind of recycle something instead of just letting it go to waste. I love feeding slugs to my alligator because she's like a garbage disposal. Here you go. Oh, you missed it. Here you go, Rex. Oh, you missed it. There you go. Oh, so tasty. Thank you, Rex. I just felt bubbles. Are you gonna poop? Rex, what are you doing? Okay, that is all taken care of. Rex was just splashing around trying to kill her dog food dish. Anyway, thank you for watching today's video, our like eggapalooza episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thank you to all of our amazing Patreon backers for your amazing support on this channel. And we'll see you next time. Okay, I should have given a warning. Um, I'm gonna have to go back and give a warning on this.